Meanwhile, outside the committee room, Comey's written remarks have driven the usual hotheads all the way to the edge and sometimes past it. Congressman Al Green of Texas went on the House floor and declared that he's going to start drawing up articles of impeachment this minute before the former FBI director even testifies. He made it very clear that he was going to fire Mr. Comey regardless as to what anyone else called to his attention. If no one else does, I will file articles of impeachment to impeach President Donald J. Trump for obstruction of justice. Well, meanwhile, the ratings bonanza on the left-wing cable channels continues as anchors and analysts compete to out-hyperventilate each other. This scandal is big, they're telling us, bigger even than you guessed it, Watergate. Donald Trump uh, is not nearly as effective at presiding over a cover-up as Richard Nixon was. Watergate pales, uh, really, uh, in my view, uh, as, as compared to what we're, uh, we're confronting now. Tonight, we have arrived at Watergate. This is Watergate. Well, you probably knew this already, but the TV business tends to draw hysterics, attention seekers, and hyperbole merchants. We work here, so we can tell you that for certain. But in overheated moments like this, it is worth taking a few steps back and considering what's really going on. Let's start with Watergate. Is this Watergate? At the heart of that scandal, there was an actual crime. Burglars broke into an actual building that held the Democratic Party's headquarters. President Nixon likely knew about that. He attempted to sabotage the federal investigation into it, and he lied during the cover-up. When those lies were exposed, he had no choice but to resign. What's the alleged crime here? Well, the alleged crime is that President Trump secretly collaborated with the government of Vladimir Putin in order to substitute Russian priorities for American priorities. In other words, that he acted as a foreign agent against this country's interests. Now, if that's true, it's a betrayal of America. It's a moral crime, and the president deserves whatever punishment he gets. If it's not true, then this is the grandest and most grotesque farce in American history. It's a witch hunt that's hurting people and paralyzing our government. There's no middle ground here. It's one or the other. Now, at this stage, there is precisely no evidence that a crime has taken place, none at all. So put yourself in the position of the accused for just a minute. Imagine you're not a Russian agent, but every day virtually the entire media and virtually everyone in power suggests that you are. How would you feel about that? What would you do about that? Let's say your FBI director had informed you and members of Congress that you were not personally under investigation. We'd well, probably want him to tell the country the same thing. Since, after all, it's true, and it's exculpatory, and it might lower the temperature a little bit. Now, that could be an uncomfortable conversation with your FBI director, but you'd seen the same FBI director publicly characterize the state of other investigations. So you know there's precedent for that. So you ask him. Now your political enemies are using that request as evidence that you're guilty of the crime you wanted the FBI director to admit you're not being investigated for. Imagine if that happened to you. You might go a little bit crazy. And come to think of it, maybe that was the whole point of this exercise. 